Hey there, this is Chris Sev with Better Dev. In this video, we're gonna make the Stripe homepage, not the current homepage, the older homepage, which I thought is a little bit cooler. We're gonna make that homepage with only Tailwind. So this is kind of what the old homepage looked like. And this sort of inspiration came from a few different iterations. There's this tutorial from Luke Brown on how to create Stripe's gradient banner with just CSS grid. So that is what the old Stripe homepage looked like, and we're gonna do that. So I kind of took this tutorial in a stream maybe six months ago and turned it into this landing page for DigitalOcean. So this is a fun thing that we're using at DigitalOcean for one of our demo apps. So I thought, well, this was plain CSS, and here in the Better Dev Discord, we had a buddy in there, Christian, Von Uffel, he made this in Tailwind, and it kind of sparked my interest in this idea again. So I thought, you know what? Let's make a tutorial and a video on how to build the Stripe homepage in Tailwind. So this thing right here is what we're gonna build. Let's get started. So I'm gonna go into a brand new code pen here. I am going to go into my CSS settings, make sure that we have Tailwind, save that. All right, so let me make sure that you all have enough zoom in right here. So let's go to 20, and then let's also zoom on the page. So that should be good. Hide HTML, or sorry, hide CSS and JavaScript. We don't need it, thanks to Tailwind, and let's get started. So with demos like this, we usually have a section, and we are going to say, hey, section, your height is the height of the viewport, and then we're going to center everything inside of it. So let's keep to that idea. And we're gonna say min height is screen. We're gonna say flex items center and justify center. Now inside of this, we're gonna have content. And the technique we're gonna have here is we're going to create a second section for stripes. So we're gonna have stripes and then we're gonna have the content itself. So we'll start off with the content. I'm gonna wrap the content in a div because you could have a ton of content like an H2, like a P tag, call to action button, image, all that good stuff. So we'll say H2 here. Let's go ahead and use our Emmet right off the bat. Let's go for font is extra bold. Let's go for text is 5XL, text is white. And our content is gonna be Stripe homepage with Tailwind. Cool, I'm gonna press tab there and that should look pretty decent. You can't really see it because there is a white background and the text is white. <laughs> so let's talk about how we're gonna use the stripes for the stripe background. That's kind of funny. So we're gonna create a div right here. And then inside of this div, we're gonna use CSS grid and we're gonna use it with the Tailwind grid classes. I've got a video on Tailwind's CSS grid classes Please check that out if you wanna know more really helpful classes. But we're gonna do a little bit of it in here and we're gonna say div times six in here. So the technique we're gonna do here is we're gonna say class here. We're gonna give this a background and let's just do black right now just to kind of demonstrate what is going on. And what's gonna happen is if we did background black here and let's give it a height, height of 20, then it would show the background here and we also give it a width of full, and that will give it a shape. That's where our thing is gonna show. And then what's gonna happen is our text right here, if we did text black for this, is gonna show on the right side of that since the parent is flex, so they're gonna sit side by side. Right here is flex, so stripes, and the content are gonna sit side by side. We don't really want that. We're gonna say white right here. What we're gonna do is take the stripes div completely out of the document flow. So we're gonna say, let's drop all that. We're gonna say absolute right here. And since this is absolute, it needs a parent to be relative and I'll make this section right here relative. So what this is gonna do is say, hey, stripes, you're gonna place absolutely inside of this div right here. And we can say, you can set the height, you could set the width, you could set the top right left zero to zero. But what we're gonna do here is say inset zero. And that's gonna set top zero, right zero, left zero, bottom zero. And that way it's gonna stretch to all the dimensions there. Now our stripes are here absolutely positioned with a background of black. Our content, we're gonna need to say class is relative. 
and now that will sit on top of the stripes. So the stripes is an absolutely positioned element on this div right here. And to make sure that 100% it's not gonna interfere with like highlighting text or anything like that. And it looks fine now, but just in case, I'm gonna do pointer events none. And that ensures that this div doesn't really take any clicks or hovers or selections like that. So now that we have this, this is the overall starting point of our background stripes. So we're gonna say here, background, let's go for a gradient to the bottom right. And I'm gonna go for from blue at 400. We're gonna go to blue at 500. Cool. But to get this to pop a little bit more, kind of like how the Stripe homepage did, let's go for via purple at 500. And what that does is it adds another color stop in the middle of this gradient. All right, so I think that's gonna do it to wrap up this entire section right here, or for the background at least. So next up, let's add a div here, and I want to wrap all of these in a div, and then give this div the class of grid. So essentially what we're gonna do here, and I'll show it off in a second, is we're gonna create a grid of six columns by four rows, and then each of these we're gonna color and place into a specific spot in that grid, and then that will create our background. So I'm gonna say here, well, let's create our grid first. Grid, columns, six, grid rows of four. And this might not take, because there's no content, so we may have to do height full, width full. Height full and width is full. All right, so now we can start styling out these things right here. So we're gonna say class is background purple at 700. And you can start to see that first one show up. And then let's do the second one. Class is background blue at 700. And the third one, let's do background is purple at 800. So they're all pretty similar. But the cool thing about this is we can start to say, hey, you, column span two. So you're gonna be two wide versus your two siblings that are only a single column wide. And let's see what else. We can class this one up. And let's go for background uh, gradient to bottom right. And there's a cool trick here in that if you are calling out a gradient to bottom right, but you have a parent that already has a gradient right here, this gradient will take the from, via, and to gradient color stops from the parent. And that's because these classes are gonna set a CSS variable for that color, and then this child div will only just say, hey, my parent has some colors, I'll take those. And if you wanna overwrite them, you can write them in yourself. So like from yellow at 500 or 400. So you could do that. But overall, we'll keep that since it kind of pops off of the background, it's really nice there. And we can actually manually position this, which is the really fun part. So we're gonna say row start three, so it's gonna drop itself down to this row right here. Now we're gonna say column start five. So that's kind of fun. But actually we can say a little bit more. So let's go column start six, and then let's say row span of two. So it's gonna go down two rows. Now I think I gotta move my face. I'll move over there. So now you see this going down two. And then let's do one more. I'm gonna hide this last one. We don't need that. Let's go for class background gradient to bottom right. Let's say row start is, let's go for row four. And let's go for column span of two. So you're gonna span two columns down here. Cool. So we have three sections up here. We have one on the right, we have one on the left right there. Now the trick to this is gonna say, hey, Take this entire grid, transform, and we're gonna say minus skew y is 12. So we're gonna just skew the whole thing so that it rotates, and there we go. So now we have kind of a fun effect on the grid that has rotated the grid around. And then we can say a little bit of an opacity change on this. Let's go for opacity is 75, just so they don't pop too much off of that background. 
And you could even change that out to 50 if you wanted. And with that 50, they're now more subtle. They let the background pop through them since they have an opacity. And we get this really cool effect. And I like this bottom one. It kind of overlays onto the next section. But overall, that is the main technique. And what we really did here was we created a stripes div that is absolutely positioned, full height, full width. And then inside of that, we put a grid inside of there. And then we just place some things along the grid to kind of change things out. And if you wanted this to be a little bit responsive, we could do text XL. And then over here, we can say medium is text 5XL. So that when we shrink down, there we go, a little bit better. And you could even bring in your responsive classes to change out the grid spacing, grid sizing, all that good stuff. But right now, I think this is a pretty good spot to land on. All right, I think that's really cool. You can definitely change out the colors for this, make your own backgrounds, make your own gradients, but a uh, very, very fun effect with only Tailwind, no CSS, no custom CSS. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.